Hey Google, open video of Michael Reeves hacking Alexa on YouTube. Okay, playing of Michael Reeves hacking Alexa on YouTube. Do you ever wonder what your employees do? Damn, ah! The Google Home is a very useful piece of kit. You can use it to set timers, or check timers, or cancel timers. So many things. This video is not endorsed by Google, by the way. The issue is that I wanted to do more of it than anyone else could, and so I made this. My idea was to link Google Home to a Python program, and the two could communicate, but the end result was far from that. However, it does still work. So I used a web service called IFTTT, which lets you use Google Home as a trigger for custom events, which was a great start. However, I then realised that the only way to send any request to something other than a smart device was to use webhooks. Now, I searched around and tried to find somewhere that told me how to use webhooks with Python, but I could not find anything anywhere. And I only knew one program that used webhooks and could also work with Python. So I turned to Discord. Okay, so I know this is starting to get a bit convoluted, but just trust me, it's, it's fine. Okay, so the Google Home triggers an event on IFTTT, which sends a webhook to a private Discord I made, which has its messages passed by a Python bot so it can do something on my computer. Simple. So I'll briefly explain how it all works, and if you don't care about that, you can just skip ahead. First off, you want to make a trigger. To do this, you need to select Google Assistant from the this part, then choose which of these suits it. You then want to choose what you want to say to the Google to trigger the event. In this case, we'll search Wikipedia. So we'll put open Wikipedia page on dollar sign. The dollar sign is what you're searching for. You can have other ways to say it, uh, but personally I only use one way. So, you then can have the Google Assistant say something in response to, you know it works. So, you could have it say, opening Wikipedia on dollar sign, meaning whatever you put into the original query. Then click create trigger. Next, you need to go to webhooks. Now, in this part, you need to find the Discord webhook URL and paste it in here. Then choose post application JSON and then create something that looks like this. Where whatever you want is within that area. For my instance, I would probably have code 6 and then whatever someone said. I can click an ingredient, text field, and then that is whatever we're searching for. And then you click create action. The code itself isn't too difficult. It's just a standard Discord bot that checks messages on the server and then determines which piece of code to run depending on what the message says. I use a code base system, so it goes from one to whatever number is the largest command. I can add as many commands as I like, and they can all be unique. I just need to remember which one I've assigned which code when creating the IFTTT. So, for some of them, such as shutting down, it will open up a bat file called shutdown.bat which will run a command line script in order to execute a piece of code which shuts the computer down. Uh, in terms of number four which is searching for a YouTube video it opens the YouTube page which finds all the results for the request that you made, takes the first link and then opens that in Google Chrome. Everything else is just a variation of this by either opening another batch file that I've made or by opening a different URL. So 
I did have some issues making this. Occasionally, Google wouldn't understand what I'm saying, or I would not remember how I phrased the trigger, or it would think I'm trying to use Chromecast, which I'm not trying to use Chromecast. Please, Google, understand, I don't have a Chromecast. So another issue I had was that because it's an external service, it was a bit slower to activate some of the commands and to actually do the code. However, this wasn't really much of an issue because it was taking forever to do it before because I couldn't. So this really improves things and I don't have to buy a Chromecast. Stop trying to sell me a Chrome. Here are some examples of what I've done with the Google Home. Turn off PC. Okay, turning computer off. Okay, Google. Abort shutdown. Okay, shutdown aborted. <laughs> Open channel Yogscast on YouTube PC. Okay, opening channel Jogscast on YouTube. Okay, Google. Show videos of Elon Musk on YouTube. Okay, opening of Elon Musk on YouTube. Sorry, I can't help with that yet. Yes, you can. But I'm still learning. Stop lying. I don't want to get in trouble. So I don't lie. You are lying! <sighs> well, I'm still learning. What do we need to fix? You! Despite that, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I've managed to take the Google Home and add code to it, essentially, making it more usable and making my computer more controllable through my voice. I'm going to leave you with this small clip of something I discovered while figuring about with the Google Home. The name on your Google Home, it hasn't got a limit on it, so you can pretty much set it as long as you want. I mean, within reason, there is still a memory limit to how much space you can take up with your name, and it won't let you go beyond it, but there is a character limit, so you can write long, long, long lists of words, or you can write stories, like this. Okay, Google, what's my name? Your name is according to all known laws of aviation. There is no way a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway because bees don't care what humans think.